For size exclusion chromatography, you are looking at the separation based on size. Now, why the word exclusion is because the reverse is the case. It means that smaller molecular weights are actually remain more remain more in the column, while the heavier molecular weights will migrate faster and they lose faster. So here, the means that the porous polymer beads have holes within them. You can see the holes. So the smaller molecular weight proteins will find their way into this into this porous polymer beads. And when they find their way into this porous polymer beads, it will take a longer time for them to travel while the heavier molecular weight will pass through the side because they cannot enter through this bead. So they will pass through the side. You can see this one is passing through here. So this is a protein. This is a protein. This is also a protein. So that is why it's called size exclusion because the smaller molecular weight compounds or molecular, molecular weight proteins actually remain more in the matrix, in the column, than the heavier molecular weight protein. For just normal size chromatography, the heavier molecular weight will remain up while the lighter molecular weight will migrate faster. But in size exclusion, the reverse is the case. That is why it is called exclusion. So protein molecules separate by size. Larger molecular or larger molecules pass more freely, appearing in the earlier fraction than the smaller molecular weight proteins. So this is also uh, okay, a separation that is based on affinity, binding, separation based on binding. So affinity, they have affection or love for something. So for hexokinase, hexokinase will have affinity for glucose. Hemoglobin will have affinity for oxygen. Uh, okay, which other one? So many other proteins will have affinity for their own particular type of substrates. So once they get to their substrate, they bind to their substrate, while others will migrate towards elution or will be eluded from the color. So here the beads. Uh, this, okay, this is the solution of ligand added to the column. So you add the ligand solution. Once you add the ligand, the proteins will bind to their ligand. And once they bind to their ligand, they loot with the ligand. So that's where you can see here the protein mixture is added to a column containing a polymer bead ligand specific for protein of interest. So when that occurs, they will bind to the ligand while other molecules will elute from the from the from the from the column. So when the proteins are washed through the column, while the protein of interest is eluted by ligand solution. So yeah, that means you add the ligand solution to make it to elute faster. So without the ligand solution, the proteins here will not elute. So that's why it's called affinity chromatography. Yeah, where the where the separation is based on the affinity of the protein to a particular ligand. So we have dialysis. So this is a dialysis bag. This is this is a this is a beaker or maybe a cylinder that contains a buffer. While the dialysis bag contains the protein and a salt protein and the what a salt or a concentrated solution it might be a salt it might be a sugar it might be any small molecule but what we are interested in here is that we are using this dialysis bag the dialysis bag has a is actually porous it's actually porous so that it will allow smaller molecular weights to leave the bag into the solution while the heavier molecular weight will remain in the bag in this case, we actually use it to separate the protein from maybe a ligand or a protein from a solution. So here you can see that this is the this is the dialysis bag. After some time, it will undergo move it will undergo movement. After some time, it will approach equilibrium, where the concentration of the salt or the or the solutes. In the chamber in the buffer solution is not equal to the concentration of that same solute in the mat in the bag in the dialysis bag. So there's this is a actually this is a problem from 17 from Leninger. 
Okay, yeah, we'll look at the salt in the protein by dialysis. Usually, sometimes when we add the salt, the salt can make the protein to lose its native state or native formation or native fold. So, in order to get the protein back to its native fold, we need to desalt the protein. So, for we to desalt the protein, we have to put the protein in the dialysis bag such that the protein and the salt will be in the bag. So, as time progresses, because the bag is also in a chamber that contains the buffer, osmosis will take place. Movement of the solute will take place. It only will start migrating towards the buffer before you know it, equilibrium will be reached, such that the amount of uh, the amount of salt in the dialysis bag will not be equal to the amount of salt in the buffer. So we can remove the dialysis bag if we are if you are certain that we, we have removed you know enough concentration of the salt but if you are not if you are certain that we want to reduce the salt concentration to a minimal point we can actually do another dialysis a second dialysis to further remove the salt so look at this question so the salt in protein by analysis a preferred protein is in a helps is in a helps which is n to hydroxyl Etipiprazine and to etanosulfonic okay, acid, which is herbs. Let me just call it herbs. So, bova at pH of 7 with 500 millimolar of sodium chloride, which is a salt. A dialysis membrane, that is membrane to hold a 1 ml sample of the protein solution. The sample in the dialysis membrane float in the beaker containing one liter of this same herbs buffer but with no with zero millimole of sodium that means no sodium chloride for dialysis so we're expecting that at we put the dialysis back into the beaker that containing one liter of the same herbs buffer the sodium chloride will migrate towards the the region of lower concentration till equilibrium is rich. So small molecules and ions such as sodium and chloride and herbs can diffuse across the dialysis membrane, but the protein cannot. The first question here is calculate the concentration of the sodium chloride in the protein sample once in the dialysis. Okay, once the dialysis has come to equilibrium. So we should the action is to calculate the concentration of sodium chloride at equilibrium. The second question is, okay, assuming that no volume change occur in the sample during the dialysis. Now, question B is to calculate the final concentration, final sodium chloride concentration in the protein, same with dialysis of dialysis in 200 ml of the same herbs buffer with zero millimolar of sodium chloride twice in succession, like. You're doing it two times, like I explained earlier. So we have one mil of a sample in pH of pH seven containing 500 millimolar of sodium chloride. So the dialysis bag is one liter of half buffer and zero containing zero millimolar of sodium. So that means we have for one mil to one liter, we have a 1,000 fold, 1,000 fold dilution. They have a 1,000 fold dilution, sodium dilution has equilibrium. So our, our answer will be 500 millimolar divided by 1,000, which will give us 0 0.5 millimolar. So that means we have 0 0.5 millimolar at equilibrium. That is what it means. So for the second question, say calculate the final concentration of sodium chloride in the protein sample after dialysis in the 250 ml of the same herbs buffer with zero concentration of sodium chloride with no concentration of sodium chloride twice in succession so here we have a similar case where remember we have 500 millimolar but in this time it's no longer 1000 ml it is 250 ml 250 ml so what we have there what we have there 500 divided by 2 we have 2.0 millimolar so that is the concentration for the first dialysis 
for the second dialysis, which remember the concentration in the bag now is now two millimolar, no longer five hundred millimolar because the equilibrium are taking place in the first case. So for the second one, we will now say the the amount the dialysis bag contain two millimolar divided by another two fifty, which is in the second uh, buffer, which is twice in the second buffer. So we have two divided by two fifty will give us zero point zero zero eight millimolar. So you can see in this case we have exhausted only 500 million total for the second one only 500 million total and we have achieved higher reduction of the sodium chloride than the 1000 mil so you can see that this one is actually economically friendly we don't need to waste much water to arrive at a very low concentration of our solution so you can see here if we are to do the 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 okay the the like at what percent or what's what is what is the food in how many food increase or how many food increase or decrease in the sodium chloride concentration so we divide the 0 0.5 divided by the second one that we achieve we have approximately 60 food lower concentration of the sodium chloride so that will tell you if you ask which one is better do we do it once with 1000 mils or do we do it twice with 250 mil and we achieve a better you know lower concentration of sodium chloride thank you please don't forget to click the subscription button below like share and comment so that we can actually serve you better thank you